Welcome to Voice Rising with Cara Johnstad. Enjoy weekly conversations with leading luminaries, pioneering visionaries, singers, poets, musicians, and sound healers as we explore the profound role our voice plays on the path to self-realization and global enlightenment. The internationally acclaimed singer, composer, author, healer, recording artist, voice expert, creator of Voice Your Essence, and founder of the School of Voice, Cara Johnstad uses her extraordinary spiritual gifts to empower others. Everything in this world vibrates. Everything has a frequency. A pioneer in the field of voice work and transformational songwriting. Her breakthrough methods are helping thousands of people worldwide fine-tune their body-mind-spirit system and unlock the energetic frequencies of limitless creativity, health, and abundance. Share your voice, ask your questions, join in the conversation. Receive life-changing, positive transformation and rise together to create a sound world. And here's your host, Kara Johnstad. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Yes, I am Cara Johnstad. And today with me in studio is best-selling author Keith Leon with his recent book. That's what we're going to be talking about. And it's called Walking with My Angels. So welcome, Keith, to the show. It's very good to have you with me here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah. So I'd like to start this conversation in a very easy place, maybe. I'd like to start it way back in your childhood. And in this book, you're talking about your journey, your journey through life from small kid to where you're at now. And you say that ever since you were a small child, you could hear the voice of your guardian angel. What was that voice like for you? What was the quality of of that voice that that touched you so much, that guided you? Mm. Well, well, first of all, it was a male voice, and it came outside of me. So sometimes Mm. it would be up in the the corner, sometimes right behind me to my right, sometimes in front of me, and the voice came from different places. And I believe that was so that I could, in my head, see, like, feel like that that it was a person, because I feel like if that that voice was in my head as a child, then when people were calling this this voice my imaginary friend, I might have bought into that, and uh, because because it was outside of me, I didn't buy into it, and then I listened to it, and then when I followed the intuition, the guidance that that was given to me by this voice, then just everything that it was telling me was always coming true, and I realized pretty quickly that I was not making it up <laughs> in my head. So so, so this voice, uh, this guardian angel was really filling in a lot of roles for me. Yeah, so it was yeah. kind of like the mom. I didn't have the dad. I didn't have the, the, the guidance. I didn't have uh, – it yeah. was all of those and, and the friend uh, that I needed. And And your childhood – was not always an easy one. I think you write very candidly about that. So you did grow up with your mom, as far as I know, but you had a lot of struggles and there was a lot of obstacles to face. And uh, were you aware while going through those tough times that you had these angelic helpers that you could rely on? Or did you try to tough it out alone and only realize when you took review of your life, you know, and saw all the pieces come together that they were always there for you. Yeah, well, that's why I believe the helpers appeared to me, you know, like that I was able to hear the voice was to get the guidance, to get the support, to get uh, all the things that I was not getting from my mother Mm because she was um, manic depressive and mostly depressive and in the bed, Mm -hmm. uh, which left my teenage sister to try to raise me. And she was trying to be a teenager. And then my grandmother did all she could, but she was still working and she was a grandma, not a mom. And so uh, it was like everybody was trying to pitch in, but for the most part, I was raising myself and uh, Mm -hmm. not a great thing for a six-year-old to do, (laughs) raise Mm -hmm. himself. And so, uh, so yeah. And and I love, I love the way you put that. Uh, My childhood was um, yeah, very interesting. So I had to look at and face and deal with a, a lot of things in my childhood, and and because of that, uh, you know, I was receiving this inner guidance that was really keeping me out of harm's way and kept me alive. There, there were times that I 
I could have died as a child and and was saved by this angel. So it's uh, it was an, it was just amazing experience to uh, to have that guidance and to be coming from from a voice that I knew was my angel. Yeah. So so do you feel that each and every one of us has? I mean, this whole show, put it like that, is about the voice, right? And I think too yeah. that the voice is just so beyond uh, what we even can imagine sometimes because we have our personal, you know, our inner voice. But like you're saying, we have our voice that touches ourselves, that realigns ourselves. We have our voice that goes out and, and can uplift others. We have a voice that can also destroy and harm people. We know that, you know, the voices from your childhood, if you have the wrong teacher or the wrong, you know, statement from from your mom or dad, it can really hurt us. And then we have these voices, these, you know, how you call it, these guides or these angelic voices. So it's it's so powerful. So do you believe that, that you know, because obviously your sister must have a guardian angel too, but she, for some reason, wasn't able to, as far as I can tell from the book, wasn't able to hear that guidance. So she really had to you know, tap maybe into her inner, inner deep intuition and knowing. Um, do you believe that we all have a an angel or 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 even more than one angel who's there guiding us and and giving us, um, yeah, guidance? Yeah, when we need it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I I know that we all have at least one guardian angel, and mm-hmm. that's not just a clever name. That's why they're here to to get us to our predetermined expiration date. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a time that we're supposed to be here walking on this earth until, and there's a lot of moving parts now in the world, and so they yeah. are on high yeah. watch. So they have only two jobs. One, love us unconditionally, and the second one is what I said, get us to our predetermined expiration date. And so if we would like any other support than that, because we have free will, then we must ask. So you can ask your guardian angel to show up for you. Hey, I would love to see evidence of you. So show up for me in ways that I will know that it's you. And I want mm-hmm. you to know that I invite that, and now I have my eyes open, and I'm keeping an eye out for it. And and you make that invitation and see, you'll see how they show up for you, and you can get answers to questions. So so for the sake of this call, like, and because I've had direct experience with angels, I'm going to call it angels, but for those of you listening, yeah. you know, you may call the same voice inner guidance system, intuition. Right. Uh, I just know something I didn't know five minutes ago, you know, spirit, God, universe, Allah, Jehovah, like it doesn't care what you you call it as long as you call it. And that's the thing, you know, sit, sit, sitting with the question and asking a question. A lot of us are doing that, but, but how long do we actually listen for the answer before we get off to the next thing and forget that we asked the question. And so uh, sit, ask and listen is something that I love teaching people and they're having so much, uh, incredible manifestation in that staying with the question until they receive the answer and knowing that that we're all tapped into source you know inner guidance angels right. and so if we stick with that question and, and put a focus on receiving the answer and stay with it like keep spinning the question as a mantra till we get the answer to the last question that there's no question that we can't find an answer to so it's, it's amazing right. we all have direct connection to that yeah, exactly. I, and uh, I was, who was I talking to the other day? I, I think Mark Nepo on the show. And just this thing to sit, like you said, to sit with the question and to, to ask, to sit, and then to wait to receive an answer, to welcome in the answer. Because in a world which is driven often by search engines, um, we are so, you know, it, it's so easy just to type in your question and then you know, somebody will, <laughs> the World Wide Web will, I'm not going to name company names here, I was very careful here, but will pop out like an answer that is supposed truth, but the the thing is that we each, for every one of us, that answer may look differently for the same question, mm-hmm. right? Right, yeah, and then somebody that's, might that's say, "I want to." Right. The truth for whoever and, typed it in, but maybe not for you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. So it's when we do that inner work and we ask and we are receptive and we're listening, we're doing the deep listening that we will get the mm-hmm. answer that we need for our question. Right. 
Yes, is, exactly. Which is powerful stuff. Wow, I'm mm -hmm. so funny. My computer here just went. Uh, tell me. Um, oh, there we have it. Um, no, my computer went uh, down here, so I was losing the questions. So sometimes you told me before the show that uh, talking about questions and answers, you have created to go together with the book, or is that separate, a deck of cards, which you can also use intuitively to ask questions and, and, and pull the answers. Is, yeah. Did I understand that correctly? Like a, like a tarot, kind of. Yeah, like I, I, I had uh, Dorian Virtue kind of angel cards and, and other cards in the past, and I really found that they, they work because mm -hmm. we shuffle them. We, we put our energy into it, and then uh, and then there's direct connection with angels, which we're talking about, and so these are angelic cards. And then uh, once we put our energy into it, we ask a question, then we pull the card, then we, we get the answer that we need every time. And I've just seen yeah. evidence over and over and over that myself. So I kind of dr always dreamed, hey, maybe someday I'll have my own card deck. And yeah. um, and so what I did was I uh, I got clearly they said you know you need to create a card deck. So I said okay, how will I do that? And so I wrote down eleven archangels names that I wanted to connect with, and asked them all to give me four messages each of what mm -hmm. they wanted me to share with the world. So there's 44 yes. messages that were channeled through me, and and I mean sitting at the computer typing, going wow as it was coming through, <laughs> you know, oh my god, this is <laughs> wow, that is so not me, that's incredible, that's you know that kind of moment, and uh, and so I took this deck, it's called a Walking with Your Angels Daily Inspiration Deck, and I pulled a card before uh, before we connected today and asked what did they want me to share with everyone listening mm -hmm. today. And what I pulled is a card from uh, Archangel Haniel, which is H-A-N as in Nancy, I-E-L. And what Haniel wants us to know is you need only ask me to assist you with new beginnings, creative, positive change, or good fortune. There's no nice. gift that is too great for you to receive, for you are created in the image and likeness of the one. You and the Father are one. You and the Mother are one. All you can imagine is available to you now. So for yeah, those of I you think that, that. Yeah, that's does that and ring true. No, it does ring true. And 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 uh, I work a lot with uh, what's called the pillar pillar meditation and just coming into that very receptive space. I think also as a composer and a singer, I'm used to channeling. Mm -hmm melodies and lyrics and everything and what i've yeah. seen in myself and also in my you know with my clients is that sometimes we just don't even trust it and believe it that that much goodness could pour through our little old body right so that something so magical is going to happen and then we're going to like oh that's not possible though you know it's like we mm -hmm. you know and and there were parts in your book which i thought was interesting there was one part actually where I, I hope I remember this correctly, but you witness a, an accident and the motorcycle driver is, you know, flying through the air into a into a back window of a of a mm -hmm. van or a car, and then basically time stops and goes backwards, and everyone's kind of stunned. Is is that possible? And you know, that's the thing: is are we also ready to receive the miracles that we ask for, or I, th I think a lot of times we unconsciously or even consciously block them because we have just been so conditioned that life is hard work and that it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's not easy yeah. to open ourselves up to bliss or ecstasy mm -hmm. or pure, yeah, or unconditional love, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, that actually I yelled no because my stepfather had died on a motorcycle. So when I saw him flying through the back window and glass break and kids are screaming and all that, and I just yelled no. And as soon as I yelled no, everything went in reverse, and he just like <laughs> ended up put, he like pushed off the back of the the van and then landed on his feet on on the side uh, of the sidewalk. And he's just yeah. walking around like a crazy man, going no way that you know that's it. This just happened. This just happened and. You know, the police showed up and they're like, "Oh, you're just in shock." And uh, but it but it was uh, it was amazing, and that was yeah. whew, that was because of my connection to my stepfather and what happened. But it was, also was a time of being trained by my 
Breakdown Angel, which I'm sure we'll talk about, uh, was a time of training. So it was also for me to witness what kind of miracles are possible. What kind of thing, like time reversal? Like, is that, that wasn't even a thing in my mind that I could believe at that moment. But I had seen yeah. it with my eyes. So how could I not yeah. believe it anymore <laughs> if I saw yeah. it with my own eyes? Yeah. So it was yeah. amazing. And my friend Larry, who I was with, um, I just uh, recently made contact with him, the very end of my tour. I've been looking and searching for years for Larry, and um, right at the end of my tour, I had like two events left. I got a, a Facebook friend request from a Larry Wright, and that's why I couldn't, mm. you know, find him. Larry, there's a lot of Larry Wrights in the world, and uh, and so uh, so I get that friend request. And I said, "Is this the Larry Wright?" And he's like, "The one who," and then he just put all these things that would make me know it was him. And my wife was blown away because I put him on the speakerphone. And one of the things he said was, remember the time when we were at the car lot and that guy crashed through the back of the thing and you yelled no. And then he pushed him and landed on his feet. And he said, like, everything that I said, had, having not read the book <laughs> right at all, right, um, right. It said everything word for word. And he kept throwing out all these stories I've been telling her for years. And she was just sitting there with God bumps from head to toe going, whoa. Oh, you know, <laughs> she loves me. She, she believed me, but I'm sure there was in, in the back of her head something that was going, mm, really. But uh, but hearing him say everything verbatim uh, was incredible, and so it's uh, wonderful to be in, in contact with one of my one of my angels again. Beautiful. Keith, we're going to take a station break, a very short station break, and then we're going to be back, and actually we are going to talk about your earthbound angel and the training that you had. Stay tuned. The cutting edge of Conscious Radio, Own Times Radio, IOM FM. Own Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. I'm Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. With happy clients all over the world, Kara Johnstad knows that your voice is the missing link to more authenticity, abundance, creativity, and health. An internationally acclaimed voice expert, Kara's breakthrough methods have helped thousands of people successfully heal their voice wounds and extinguish the story of self-doubt and shyness forever. Join in group trainings, attend online sessions, schedule one-on-one -on -one time, and invite Kara to work with your organization and community. Get started today. Go to www.karajohnstad.com and receive a special guided meditation designed to fine-tune your inner voice and welcome you on the voice journey. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. <laughs> the dad joke. Corny, groan-worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh, because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Wow. 
Welcome back. You're at Voice Rising, and I am your host, Cara Johnstad. Today in studio with me is the best-selling author, Keith Leone, and we are talking about angels and voices and all those good things. When we left off uh, talking about earthbound angels, Keith, what is your definition for all of us to understand what is an earthbound angel? Well, I, I know that people call people that do good deeds for each other earthbound angels, but but what I'm talking about is uh, what I talk about in the book. A lot of angel, a lot of angel people don't know about or even talk about, which is mm-hmm. that there are a group of entities that 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 used to be in the etheric. You know, they were spirit, they were energy, and then they have been put into a body, and now they are assigned to certain people these difference mm-hmm. makers of the world who may not make it to their predetermined expiration date if they don't get some help, if they don't get a little mm-hmm. support from these people. So in my case, this uh, earthbound angel that was assigned to me had to come and get a job in my town, had to come to my job and be- befriend me enough that I would trust them enough to say, hey, let's hang out after work, enough to um, trust me enough that they could do what's called a life review, take my stepfather's ring and hold it in his hands and tell me everything about my life, everything. And there was no Google mm-hmm. back then, so he couldn't know this mm-hmm. stuff. And then right. to keep keep doing things, predicting world events, predicting how my day would be the next day, everything verbatim, to where I finally trusted him enough to then he could finally tell me, I am here to do a few things. One, take you from believing in nothing to believing in everything so you can live into your life purpose. And then at some point I will reveal to you your life purpose. And at some point I will also save your life. And once I've done that, then you have to let me go because then I have to go do it for the next person that I'm assigned mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. So so that's really my favorite part of the book is all of those stories. Like if you think like, what did, what did he have to show me? What did he do? What did I get to do? <laughs> to take me from believing in nothing to believing in everything. And you can imagine what kind of miracles I had to see. And one of them you talked about earlier Mm -hmm. uh, was that, you know, person chime reversing in front of my eyes. That's a good one. Uh, But there are many, many more. So so all those kind of mentor moments and and things that happened, I I love that part of the book. And and I I barely, you know, if I told all of the things, then that would have been a 500-page book. So I had to just select some of the things. Ah, you didn't make so, a sequel. Look at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and the interesting thing is that a lot of them were, uh, when, have you read Way of the Peaceful Warrior, that book with Dan I Milner? Have. Yeah, I was okay, going to get to that when one, I read, but, Yeah, tell when me about I read it. That book, I, yeah. yeah, when I read that book, I, I thought for sure that he had followed me around in Fresno with a pen and paper and like took notes on everything that was happening for me. And I, I could swear that it must be the same Earthbound Angel, because uh, so many of the things were the same, you know, just right. were the same. He was a mechanic, just like that. The way that he initially proved uh, that he was who he was, was the same. Like, I was like, wow, when I was reading that. So, of course, I didn't write any of that, because people would think, yeah, he's just redoing that book. <laughs> but when I read it, I was just, whoa, there's no way that this isn't the same Earthbound Angel that was assigned to both of us, which is pretty cool. Well, have you ever asked? Uh, have you ever asked Dan if it was the same, how he wrote, if it's the same? I mean, who knows? Maybe he had a twin yeah. brother, or maybe he was, his his yeah. energy field is I don't so know. big. I, yeah, I was I was at one event uh, that he was at and didn't get to really meet him. Um, but if I find myself sitting in front of him, I'm sure there's an incredible conversation that will be had uh, on that day. Because, Your earthbound uh, be... angel was called John, is that correct? Yes, for the sake of the book, I uh, called him John. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> And this is there, for the sake of the book. I was laughing because my last name is Johnstad, so I was like, okay, for the sake of a name, um, he he <laughs> takes you at some point to a cave, and you follow him into mm-hmm. that cave, and it keeps on getting darker, and 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 you're really in the middle of of this really really dark. Or he has obviously a flashlight. He's leading you in. He's leading you in. Suddenly the light goes out, and you're standing in complete darkness, gripped by fear, and you cannot figure out where he is you can't yes. see him you can't hear him right and what happened in that moment in complete 
darkness, and then after that something shifted, and the word maybe faith and trust uh, anchored itself a little bit more in your bones. Well, as I started hyperventilating, freaking out, <laughs> right, feeling claustrophobic, mm -hmm. thinking, where where did he go? Why would he leave me here? You know, why did he turn that flashlight off? Why would he leave me? Uh, then I heard there, heard him say, breathe, take a breath, relax, and trust. Don't worry. And he told me to sit down on the ground, legs crossed, and repeated that I should take a nice deep breath and relax and trust. And then I did what he told me, and, and my heartbeat slowed, and anxiety subsided. And uh, when I was relaxed again, then the flashlight came back on. And what I found was that, that he was standing in the exact spot where he had been when he turned the flashlight off. He, he didn't move, yeah. right? He was 100 feet in front of me. If I would have walked 100 feet straight, just in faith, I would have bumped into him. <laughs> but instead, I freaked out. So. So he explained that this was a metaphor for life, that there would be many times in my life that I'd become accustomed to walking into the light, and then something would happen, and the light would appear or uh, to be dim or to turn off. Mm -hmm. And how I reacted in those situations would determine my ability to survive them. And the way that I reacted would also determine how much I'd be able to learn from my life experiences. Mm -hmm. And he told me to just think of it this way. The light is always just a hundred feet away. It never leaves, it only appears to. So when this happens in life, you have a choice. You can freak out, get anxious, depressed, blame the light, point fingers, struggle and judge, or you can trust that the light is there. And if you can know in your heart that the light is still there, all you need to do is stay calm and navigate your way forward until you find the light. Yeah, I thought I thought you were gonna say, Keith, that we need to know there's also a flashlight inside us. <laughs> And if we're in the, if we're in the if we're in the freaking dark that we get to be that star. We get to light it up. We get to remember our own inner our own inner brightness. But it's good yeah, well, to the, remember. The challenge is yeah. at the, the challenge is at that time, like at that time when it's dark, that's the time when it seems to be the hardest to remember that. Right? Yeah. That's true. To to remember yeah. that, unfortunately. And so so that's why I had uh, that happens so that so that whenever that comes I can remember what he said and remember the wisdom that came from someone else. <laughs> so there's that whole thing about us uh, mentors and teachers and listening yeah. to the teachers when the true mentor, the true teacher is sitting right where you're sitting right now. <laughs> it's right inside of you. And that's and that really is my message in, in my live events and everywhere I go is is that you are the one. Right? You're the one. So if anybody comes to me and says, oh, you're special, you're the one. I'm like, no, you're the one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're the one. You can do anything that I can do, right? That's what Jesus said all day long. Anything that I do, you can do too. And, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that as well. Nothing. So you went on, on all these adventures. You went on all these, you, you know, had normal jobs. You, I think you became a studio engineer. I'm not sure. You're, you're a musician. At some point you started writing. I know there's a beautiful seen in the book on how you you not only found your your first wife long story short the marriage mm -hmm. hadn't really happened but whatever and then your beautiful second wife and you started even your own publishing company so you you yeah. really truly understand what is very important to me the power of word and how our story can not only change our narrative, but can also change the narrative of the world. I think that's very important in these times that we remember that we have, you know, when we come back to, when we, if we want to have authority, we need to author our own stories, right? And and you authored the best-selling book, Who Do You Think You Are? Discover the Purpose of Your Life, which featured, um, for those of us who remember, because it's it's a while back, but it was a very powerful film called The Secret, and mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of luminaries that are still very much leading um, that were in this film, and, and that book also, was that the book that kind of, was that one of your first books that 
was yeah that was the second book the first book i the second book. was a, re- a relationship book i did with my wife uh, and we had john mm-hmm. gray endorsed it and it was a relationship book but but just i probably had sold 12 copies of that uh, because i didn't know what to do with the book yet and uh, the second book though that you're talking about uh, i had 10 people from the movie the secret i had pretty right. much everybody in that book you would read their bio and go oh yeah yeah i know them i yeah. love them yeah, yeah yeah so it was just yeah. just amazing so that was a that was the, what you and i were talking about previously uh, about sit ask and listen that was the, f- the first time that i really did that in business so for that book project i just put every day i put aside my plan and just said what's my next step and then i sat in the silence and waited till i received an answer and i didn't move till i received the answer to that one question and oh, I did that okay. over and over again. And uh, so what I downloaded was a process of how to ask all these famous people if they would be in my book and in a way that they all said yes, which is just crazy. Uh, and uh, every question that I had, I got answers to just sitting, asking, and then not moving until I, until I got the answer. And uh, so because of that and because of the people who are in the book, like Jack Canfield, Bob Proctor, Marcy Shimoff, mm-hmm. Joe Vitale, John Asraf, you know, all the best-selling authors of the world. And, and Joe Vitale created this thing called Joint Venture Marketing, right? He's the king of that. Uh, they all right. took me under their wing, taught me everything that they knew. Like, let me say that again. Took me under their wing, <laughs> taught me everything that they knew, all of them. And all I did was take really great notes and implement what they taught me and the difference was international bestseller and then two weeks before the book came out uh, oprah did me this beautiful favor of holding up eckhart tolle's book about life purpose and made it the topic of the world two weeks before my launch and so, oh uh, beautiful yeah and 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 the secret it you know was still hot and so needless to say that book was uh, literally flying off the shelf and um Amazon has that algorithm. If you love that book, you'll love this book. So everybody mm-hmm. that went there for yeah, Eckhart's yeah. book, it was recommending mine, you know. So so it was the game changer of all game changers. It took me from being on the stage in front of 20 people to a you know, 1,000 people. And, right, uh, right. And yeah, just changed everything. And mostly what changed me was their guidance, their mentorship, their friendship. And, and, and I ended up with the three mentors that I always – wanted from that project that I always wanted so it's just it was an amazing amazing transformation from uh, well, I, tuning in to this inner guidance and doing what I'm teaching now tuning into the inner guidance and then again remembering that these mentors have voices and their voices are are speaking and giving guidance and what I say which is very bizarre which is very weird but that's how it is is that the voices from our beloveds and from our mentors and from our the people around us they really truly do enter our bodies i mean they they reach places where other people might not right so th- with the sound we're able to penetrate very deeply and um that's when we talk about deep listening right we we a lot of people don't when they think about the voice they think about let's say the speaking voice or the singing voice but they don't realize how important the ears are and hearing is to the here and now if you i mean if you talk about Eckhart's book the power of now it's like when we're in one tone we are in the present moment and when you're in that channeled state of writing a book if it's coming from that pure channeled state you are in the the presence of of now right yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's interesting you'd say that. It, it is we have a, a process with our publishing company called the You Speak It book process. And uh-huh. to to write a book with us, you don't actually have to write a word. You just show up, and uh, you'll speak your book. And we tap you into that of what you just said. We have a process that taps you into the part that already knows exactly what to say and when to say it and how to say it. And uh, yeah. and so on our, our end, we just get you talking, and on our and on your end, and then on our end, it's coming together with structure. And uh, we've done uh, many, 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 many books like that. And it's uh, really getting people to, to tap into exactly what you just said, to that, uh, to use their voice and to tap into that part that already knows the answer to every question before it's asked. I mean, it's very beautiful because then also the book is written, written more conversational style, right? So the people yeah. are more in their heart when they read it maybe mm-hmm. then often when it's coming from our 
head when we're thinking too much when we're writing. But if we're speaking, a lot of times that's the, the voice is very much connected to the heart, to the heart energy, right? Yeah, uh, and then, so, then you as the author, when people see you speak live or hear you, they go, whoa, for once the book and the person are the same, <laughs> right? Ah, that like is the true. same person. <laughs> ah. you, can tell what, you can tell what a, what a book was ghostwritten because you'll stand in front of that person at an event and go, huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> huh. That's true. Yeah, but you must have so good <laughs> editors. You must have good editors because I could write a book like this too, but then I'm in such deep yeah. flow. You must have very good yeah. editors on your end in your publishing house. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and they've kind of uh, unlearned and been, and been retrained to keep the author's voice because that's most editors are not taught that. You know, they're taught to be brilliant and bring in the, their great words. And so, uh, so our editors would, if they weren't clear about something you said, they would say, "Hey, when you said this, what did you mean?" And then whatever you tell them at that point, that's what they would replace it with instead of what they think you meant. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. We're going to take a sh another short, very short station break. I'm incredibly excited about uh, creating books with your <laughs> publishing company. This is going to be a win-win. Here we go. Awesome. We'll be back, Keith, in a second. Conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. This is Cara Johnstad. You're at Voice Rising, and with me in studio is Keith Leon. And we are talking about actually the voice, all the beautiful vibrations, and including the voice of your guardian angel and how you can tap into that, I guess, your own intuition and how you can also listen into the, the angelic voices. We're also talking about deep listening. Um, Keith, it's it's... It's rare to find somebody who can really listen, and a lot of people that are trying to speak their truth are always getting interrupted, right? And we mm -hmm. rarely let people finish speaking. And you were, you know, saying that if we actually listen, number one, do we get the answer from our guide or our our system? But also, we're gonna, if you ask the right question and listen, you're gonna also know exactly how the person is who's across the table from you. 
Mm. Yes, that is so true. Like how, how rarely do we get to complete a thought, especially if we're in a yeah, heated talk with somebody, <laughs> right? Mm. You never get to finish, but uh, it's in the listing that we get all the answers that we need to receive, whether that's in relationship, it's in business, it's wherever it is, the listening is the way more valuable than uh, than talking. And uh, also the quality of our answer is based on the quality of our question. So yeah. being really, really clear with the universe exactly what we're asking and starting that question with the word how or what as opposed to why, <laughs> then we'll get great mm -hmm. answers. We start a question with the word why, then the universe just goes, yeah, why does that keep happening? And then it keeps giving you reasons to ask why. So why is mm. never a question you want, you, that you want to ask ever? <laughs> how, what, you know, how can I you should, do You should tell that to, uh, what is it, the three-year-olds that are in our lives that are, you know, why yeah. does this happen? Why does this happen? <laughs> why, why? And it yeah, continues why, for why? years. It yeah. does. <laughs> and, I mean, I was thinking how lucky I am as a public speaker and as a singer and, you know, that I actually have the audience and they are listening for two hours and I get to complete all my songs. You know, so we're, we're pretty lucky if we um, yeah. live that, no? Exactly. Yeah. So you are, you are also not only a writer, but you are also a um, singer or a musician. Mm -hmm. Would you say you're a singer? Um, yeah. I would love to play. You sent in a track for us to play, and I would love to play that track. It's entitled Ohm. Uh, you want to say something about the track before we play it? Uh, is it your your perfect? Is that the one I say? No, oh, it might be your perfect. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah a dear dear friend of mine, uh, Jamie Lua, wrote this song, and uh, when my partner and I called him, this is kind of like his uh, Imagine. You know, the song that he's the most known for and we called him and asked if we could uh, record our, our own version of that song and he said yes so um, that's what i'll share with you it's uh, so it's our our version of his very well-known beautiful gorgeous song oh beautiful okay let's listen into your perfect Swallow 
in a way to introduce others to angelic voices that surround them and support them to help them and support mm-hmm. them open their own writing channel could one say that or voice channel so yes. that they can also write their stories write their books mm-hmm. um, share with me more about yeah. your vision for 2020 and beyond where what you would like to manifest and create oh, well I Ever since all this happened to me, I have been helping others to get their mission message uh, out to the world, right? So to mm-hmm. teaching people to use their voice, you know, whether it be singing or writing books. And uh, and so we're going to continue uh, to help people to write their books without writing a single word. And you can go to youspeakitbooks.com. Uh, there's a video there. You can get a what's called an expert author success blueprint kind of shows you the path to taking your voice and, and the things to do to, to get out there to the world with your mission and message. That's just a gift for showing up. Um, there's that. And then since this book came out in August, I've been doing what, what I just have this passion for, and that is going out, doing live events. And every event is completely different, right? Because mm-hmm. 
if I show up think with a plan, then that's my ego saying, I, I think I know what you need. So every event I show up without a plan. Uh, that's what I was told when I said, how will these events go? And the, the angel said, uh, all the tools but no plan. All the tools and no plan. <laughs> and uh, that's contrary contrary to the way I've done everything previous. <laughs> I love to have a plan. I love to have my slides. Uh, it's the same talk over and over again, right? But not this time. No, with the, with the angel piece, it's show up and then tune in and find out what the room needs and ask them, what do you want to do? What do you need? And, and having the angels mm-hmm. guide me. And so, so I just have like all these CDs with tracks. I have my guitar there. I have every, every tool that I would need, but, but, it, but what the tools I go to are different because they're based on what the room needs. So that's just been incredible <laughs> doing those events. And um, I just uh, finished up my, my tour and uh, now I'm back up here in, in Vermont. I'm going to do some, uh, regional events up here. Yeah, and I was out on the road since August, so it's just been uh, nothing short of amazing to, to watch transformation, watch people get in touch with that light inside of them, have their loved ones come speak to them at the event who who never had before, you know, or since they had passed, never had, had no contact, and uh, healings that happen. So so this journey that I've been put on by the angels, right? Uh, it's just nothing short of spectacular to witness, and uh, I just keep showing up and, and eyes open and ears open and, and watching the miracles happen in front of my eyes just every day. So we can understand that the people come into the room or the space, and you are available as a as a vessel or a channel with all the experiences, the life experiences. I mean, as a musician, you'd say maybe you have certain basic tracks or you have uh, certain yeah. things that you that you have i mean they're in your bones and then depending yeah. on the situation you tune into that guidance and you then either you speak or you sing or you bring yeah. people together and hold hands or yeah do processes it's, it's or yeah processes. There's, there's a, a healing process that sh- showed up a few times at the event where people had healing with with that one person they had never ever been able to get to that place of healing with mm-hmm. had it mm-hmm. you know in the moment uh, so yeah it's it's uh, music processes it's q and a it's uh, it's all of that and and who knows what more <laughs> right it just keeps keeps changing every time and my wife is uh, an incredible artist who is able to feel energy cuz she's an empath so she's mm-hmm. there at the event painting uh, on digitally painting the energy that's in the room so every painting that she comes up with at the end is completely different and people can uh, see see themselves mm-hmm. or see things mm-hmm. in the painting like oh my god mm-hmm. that was for me that's see that's why because of that because of that so it's <laughs> the whole experience is uh is um is uh led by created uh by the people for the for the people that are in the room yeah, it sounds very transformational. Interactive. Transformational, yeah. interactive yeah. medicine, actually. Good good for us. What is one golden nugget about the voice that you would love everybody to know? Mm. Well, not only the voice, but just just us, and that is that, that you make a difference in the world. Mm. Whether where people forget to tell us that we make a difference in their lives and whether they um, – Remember to tell you or not, I want to tell you, you do make a difference and you may have saved a life today just by smiling and saying hello to someone because they felt they were not seen and maybe they were going to take their life that day and they talked themselves out of it on the way home because you said hi. Oh, well, they saw me. Well, maybe if they see me, someone else sees me. Maybe my family would miss me when I was gone. These are the things that we don't know because um, a lot of times people forget to tell us the difference that we're making in the world. So. So thanks for being the gift of you. Yeah, Yeah. thank you. Which means also that we have to remember that not only for ourselves to remember recognizing ourselves, right, but also upping it on the scale of less criticism out there in the world and more empowerment Mm -hmm. and more walking in beauty and uh, sharing with people um, what Mm -hmm. they mean to us, right? Mm -hmm. I think. Yes. Yeah, I also lost my yeah. dad when I was very young, and I re- and I remember ever since then. I say I love you to so many people, and people think I'm very weird because uh, 
I think because I, you know, because when people, when you lose people so fast, you realize how precious this life is. And then you start living with a different intent, a different intent mm-hmm. that you, you say the I love yous and you heal in yeah. that moment. Keith, it's been yeah. a great pleasure to have you on the show. I wish you lots yeah. of success with uh, walking with your angels. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Thank and you. And come Thank back you. again. Yeah. Thank you. And if the book is at walkingwithmyangelsbook.com. You can get ah, it there perfect. along with, and you get $1,600 worth of free cool stuff and the book. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, walkingwithmyangelsbook.com. Perfect. Keith, thanks so much. You're welcome. Blessings. Take care. Thank you for having me. Here's one.